going out of sight. Now, police are checking people's papers. They're loading them into the vans. Oh no, the new law, certain deportation. My mother, brother, sister, and I scramble up a steep rocky hill through tangled bushes, half run, half walk away from this camp, our home for the last two months. To think we once thought we could be safe here. We live peacefully, 30 families in 30 shacks. We bothered no one. We planted flowers, we planted gardens. And now we flee with only the clothes on our back. It's a familiar routine. Since we came to Rome a year ago, I've lost track of how many times we've been forced to flee camps like this one. We'd find an abandoned piece of land somewhere on the edge of, of a dump. And we'd scrounge in the garbage for, for pieces of wood, plastic, metal, anything to construct a, a small shelter. We'd stretch some plastic over the top, the roof, and this, this, home. No electricity, no plumbing, no heating, no running water, no toilet. We use plastic bags. Now, in the darkness, exhausted, hungry, unsure of where to go, we walk. My mother tells my brother, who's 10 years old and running a fever, and my sister, who's 11, lost his shoe and is crying, not to think about food. My sister looks up at me and asks, Zinka, where do we go now? I put my arm around her and I say, don't think about it, don't worry, just keep walking, just keep walking. Secretly, I hope for shelter somewhere ahead in the darkness. My people call these walks death marches. Our elders say in the past the Germans used gas chambers and ovens. Today, the Italians use starvation, disease, and the cold. I call it ethnic cleansing.